Hello, welcome to one of the two pre-course videos from the conscientious biologist, Ben Gallagher. This one is really to help you start and plan your journey through biology GCSE. I've titled this one, The Big Five. This is five questions that I've come up with over years and years of teaching biology that really help to simplify the subject down and give you a really good understanding that everything in biology is really closely linked and integrated together. And if you can start to consider biology, as all these things all being part of just one essential point then it will really help you to understand it too often teaching is done in little compartments you learn this little bit and then you put it to one side and you learn the next little bit without necessarily bridging between the two and setting the really solid foundations of your knowledge so I've tried to simplify it to these five questions that are going to help you to do that. This is the introduction to my full course, but it also includes the really, really important lesson sequence. This sets out all of the lessons in order that you really should be following in that sequence to get the most out of this course. It's suitable for GCSE level. This whole set of uh, lessons is built to get you uh, as high a grade as you possibly can on your GCSEs. If you like this video and if you like any of the ones throughout the whole course, please do subscribe to my channel. It really helps me to get as many subscriptions as possible. It's all entirely free and it always will be. Thank you. So let's get down to it. I won't keep you too long on this video because I really want you to get started on the content based lessons. But let's think about those five big questions. But this, please. This is the start of course introduction to biology. There is another video called the big five questions, but it's an end of course review. It looks at all those five questions, but loads and loads more detail on them. It's a much longer, much more comprehensive video. This is just to start you off, give you the questions, a vague overview to set you in the right direction. So let's pull those five questions up. The first one, and this is the most important one really, is what are cells? Because all life is based on cells. Cells are the smallest unit of life you can have. And if there's something that isn't made of cells, then quite simply it isn't life and it isn't part of biology. So it's really, really important that you get a really clear understanding of what are cells. They're the little individual compartments of life. You can have them on their own. They can stick together to be multicellular organisms. They can have huge levels of complexity, both as an individual cell and as tissues and organs and whole organisms. But everything in biology is based on cells. So that's the key thing to keep bridging back to, no matter what we study, it all comes back to what are these cells. Secondly, what do they do? If you can understand what a cell has to do and how it has to function, then you've got a great understanding of how everything in the biological world is set up kinder to provide for the cell so that it can do those things. That also answers the question of what is life, because life is a cell doing what the cell needs to do. That's basically all life is. Question three, what do they need? You've got a cell. It's got these things it needs to do. What does it need in order to be able to do those things? Because if it can get the things it needs to do the things it needs to do, then you have life and life is biology. Question four, how do they get what they need? It's that straightforward. Those first four questions cover almost all of biology because if you know what a cell is you know what the cell has to do you know what it needs in order to um what it needs to get in order to do those things and you know the mechanisms that are in place for delivering that stuff to the cell then you've pretty much got life explained so these four questions notice four it's big five questions there is a fifth but these four will give you an amazing background in biology they can be applied to help you understand everything else but of course the kind of flip of that is without an understanding of these questions you really struggle to understand anything else there's no point going on to anything else more complex in biology unless you've got a really really clear understanding of these four questions they represent essential knowledge and for my course i've designated this as phase one so all of those four questions are answered in phase one of my course. There's only two phases to the course. Phase one focuses on those four. So phase five has to focus on the last fifth question. And it is a massive question. OK, um, so that's phase two. Sorry, the result of all that. OK, so that question, though, let's try and pick that apart because it's only one of the five, but it is enormous. 
OK, so what's the result of having all these cells that can function, that can do things and that can create life? Well, think about that. Once you've got those cells and they're alive and they can be provided with everything they need to do, then you've got to start to think, well, OK, I've got these functionals. How do they communicate with each other? So you've got to bring in things like the nervous system, like the endocrine system with hormones. You've got to think about things like, well, OK, if those cells can all fit together and form multicellular life and you've got a whole organism, how does that organism interact with other organisms? So you can start to bring in things in ecology like predators and prey and feeding relationships and things like that. How do how do those organisms fit in the environment that they're in? So you've got all of ecology to come um, to come into that. How do those organisms um, pass things on to the next generation? So then you've got genetics and inheritance coming into that. You've got things like um, how can those things improve over time? So then you've got all of evolution that you've got to tag into that. What happens when those cells um, are under attack? How do they defend themselves? And you've got all about the immune system as well. So once you've got these cells and you've got those first four questions answered, You've then got a whole load of biology of what's the result of having cells. What happened after those cells came into being? So that's question five, but that's phase two. So let's pull up the lesson sequence here. I'm only going to give you the lesson sequence for phase one to start with. When we're ready to start phase two, there'll be a second video like this that will talk you through that. Now, I'm going to pull up the whole table. Now, that might look a bit intimidating. It's a big table. It's a lot of information, but it's really not. And I've tried to break this table down to be as simple as possible. And I've made the course as simple to follow as possible. If you look at the far column over there first, that's a list of all of the videos that I've made that go into phase one. Now, the first two are the pre-course ones. So if you just look across at the next column now, the one that says phase, you'll see that those first two under phase have got pre-course. So I'm hoping you've already gone and watched the steps to exam success, the Gallagher method video. If you haven't, go to that one next, but it's quite important that you watch the steps to success one and this one, the big five, the five questions that simplify biology to give you a really good start to how you're going to use your course. That steps to exam success one is basically about the science behind learning. I've put it together over many, many years of teaching to really try and help you to get ownership of your own education. So do go and watch that one. But then we start phase one. Firstly, you've got the six cell biology lessons. And you'll notice in the next column there, the one titled playlist, I've put the lessons together in groups that kind of fit nicely and fit logically together. And if you look at the playlists on my YouTube channel, they're already in there. So you could just go to the cell biology playlist, click play, and it will go through all six at once. OK, that might save you some time rather than looking for the individual videos. But you've got the six cell biology ones. Then you've got the transport through membranes ones. There's four of those. Then you've got three proteins ones. Proteins really, really important. Then you've got a big chunk of human physiology. That's digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system. Then we've got bioenergetics. That's photosynthesis and respiration. That's not that much stuff. If you look down at the last column then for the number, that's 27 lessons in total, but that includes those two pre-course ones. So make sure you've taken a screenshot of this screen or take a photo of it or whatever you need to do, but make sure you've recorded this screen, paste it onto a Word document, print it out, stick it up on your wall, whatever you want to do with it. But this is the sequence of lessons that I really, really want you to follow in this order. OK, um, I put reviews and recaps wherever they're useful. So each playlist can be viewed as a standalone section. You could go straight to human physiology, for example, and just crack on with it because there's reviews of all the relevant stuff in there. But the knowledge builds in complexity. So if you went straight to, say, human physiology or bioenergetics, you might struggle and go, well, hang on, I don't really understand that. And you'd need to skip back to some. So do try and view them in sequence. There's also a few skills and exam technique videos that I've made for you that will really help you show your skills, get the marks in the exams. But some of the skills are also key scientific skills like um, planning, evaluating, using graphs, interpreting data, things like that. So you might want to have a look at those before you go to phase two, or you might want to leave them until the end of the course until you've completed phase two as well. But they're really, really essential skills. OK, remember, take a screenshot of this if you haven't already. So moving on then to how the lessons fit 
with those five initial questions. We'll go through this really quickly so you can take a screenshot as well, just to help you merge the first two slides together, okay? So for phase one, remember we've got these questions. What are cells? What do they do? What do they need? How do they get what they need? Those are the four questions for phase one. So what are cells? You need to watch the cells one, two, three, four, and six video. Because what do they do is covered in cells five, that's mitosis, cell division, the three proteins lectures and the two photosynthesis and three respiration lectures. That covers pretty much all of what cells do, certainly at GCSE level. What do they need? There's just one lesson you need to watch for this and it comes right at the end of phase one. It kind of pulls everything together. It's a summary and overview of cell biology because that video links up huge amounts of all those other ones on that list. How do they get what they need? That's the transport through membranes uh, videos, one, two, and three, the surface area to volume ratio, the digestion, the respiratory system, and circulatory system videos, okay? That in total is 25 videos, but those 25 cover about half of the whole GCSE course. And when you consider that each video is kind of 15 to 20 minutes long, that's only about five hours of stuff. Most people have two or three hours per week of biology lessons. So what I'm saying is we can cover in these videos half of your GCSE in the equivalent of two weeks worth of lessons. Now that's got to be a pretty good deal for you guys, okay? So please invest that time, five hours, half the course covered. And it might answer loads of questions that you've had in class. It might reinforce your knowledge. It could be that you're studying entirely at home. You don't go to school at all, in which case this is going to cover everything for you, but you will really need to use those skills and exam technique lessons that I've added to this. Um, this, as I've said, will give you really strong foundations on which to build your knowledge. And then of course you can go on to what is the result of that, which comes up in the phase two. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Take a screenshot of this as well, if you like, just to see how it all pieces together. Now, where I'd like you to start your learning as it was shown on the, the overall lesson sequence, start with cells one, the introduction and overview. That really is the best, best start place for any scientist. Even if you're in year seven, year nine, wherever you are, that's where you wanna to start to make sure you've got a good grounding in biology. I'll ask you each time to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. That will make sure you're kept updated on anything. If you've liked any of the videos, please do click the like below them. Thank you.